All right, we're gonna talk about pedigrees. When we talk about a pedigree, a pedigree is a graphic representation of mating and offsprings. So we're gonna actually look at a pedigree that I drew out, but it's important that you understand a pedigree um, and a graphic representation. Um, when you draw squares, that's the male. And when you draw a circle, that's a female. And then if we wanted to use a pedigree, what we use pedigrees for is to determine if we have dominant traits in a generation or recessive traits. So we can see matings, we can see offspring that are born, and we can see multiple generations. Now pedigrees are super um, important when you talk about like dogs pedigrees, like who they come from. Um, it really determines like how much a full-blooded dog would cost. So when you take a male and a female and they mate, um, you draw a line in between them, and then coming off the line that you see here in purple, this represents their offspring. So the purple at the bottom here is their, they had one son and one daughter. So we're gonna see a graphic representation going by generations to see mating and offspring. So I drew out my pedigree, and this is several generations in. So we have my grandfather and my grandmother, and then coming off of their mating is my dad and my aunt. So this is a representation of how they mated, and they produced my dad, and then over to the right, my aunt. So this is considered to be like your first generation, and we could put, dad over here because that's my dad and this would represent my aunt that is the offspring of grandma and grandpa now over to the side they have their own mate so my mom and my dad they mated so this represents a mate my aunt is gonna mate with another guy that would be my uncle so they have their own children so when we look at the second generation, the second generation had their own children. So um, my mom and dad had three children. So this would represent my older sister and I'm the middle. And then I have a brother. Now, um, he has also had children. My, my sister has two, but then this gets too crazy. And then my aunt had three sons. Uh, my aunt and uncle had three sons and um, a daughter. So I'm only gonna draw like this far to help you see the generations. So my generation would be the third generation and then my brother's kids would represent the fourth generation. Now, if we're looking at um, pedigrees to determine if traits are dominant or recessive, there's a couple things to remember. Um, traits, genetic traits, um, and conditions like cystic fibrosis or um, achondroplasia or any of those can be dominant or recessive. So we fill in um, the cell to say that they're affected. Now my family has a genetic condition which is involving blood clotting. My grandmother had it, my dad has it. Now I haven't been tested for it, but I'm saying that I have it. Um, just to you know show a pedigree if I had been tested and then I'm saying that my brother's daughter has it so if we see that something affects every generation it doesn't have to be on both sides it just has to affect all the generations so in one through four we can determine that the trait for blood clotting if it does you know show that I have it and then one of my nieces or nephews has it we can literally say that it's a dominant trait. It's in every generation. Now, if it skips generations or it's in the bottom three generations, it's still considered to be recessive. The question is, is it in every generation? Now, if we look at this, you can also determine possible genotypes of a trait. So, when looking at grandma and grandpa, they had a, one child without a disease and one child with the disease. So if we looked at grandma, 
we would know that this is a dominant trait. So as soon as you say that this is a dominant trait, then you know that grandma's genotype, and we're gonna just use simple dominance, is either homozygous dominant or it is heterozygous. So we can look at this and then basically look at grandpa's information. He doesn't have it, so grandpa genotype would be homozygous recessive. He does not have the trait because if it's in every generation, which it is, we would say that it is dominant. So asking about grandma, you can figure out grandma's genotype by figuring out what her kids look like. So if grandma's genotype is homozygous dominant and grandpa is homozygous recessive, then both the aunt and the dad would have this, you know, you know, disease or disorder because if the grandpa is homozygous recessive and the grandma is homozygous dominant, when you do the cross, you are saying that you have four genotypes that are going to be heterozygous and therefore the aunt and the dad would both be affected. But that is not the case. So we can rule out that the grandma is not homozygous dominant. We can say she has to be heterozygous because the aunt was born without the trait. So now, if this were the case, then you can also figure out the dad. So we're saying that the grandmother is heterozygous and the grandfather is homozygous recessive. Which means that there is a 50-50 chance that the aunt and the dad can end up with the trait. Now, by looking at the other generations, you can determine what the aunt and uncle's genotypes are if their children do not have it. Well, if their children don't have it and it's a dominant trait, then both the aunt and the uncle must be considered homozygous recessive. However, the dad, because he is an offspring of grandma and grandpa, his genotype has to be, he is heterozygous. So if the mom was homozygous dominant, then you would have more of my siblings being affected. So we obviously know my mom would be considered to be homozygous recessive. Now, as far as my brother goes, my brother doesn't have the affected um, trait. However, his wife could, um, but maybe he hasn't done the testing. So really to determine if you're homozygous dominant or recessive, you need to know if the trait is dominant or recessive. And the way you do that is you determine if it's in every generation, and then you can figure out the genotype based on the pedigree. Um, if you said that this was the genotype um, was dominant and I asked the phenotype of the grandma and we're saying blood clotting, you would say she has the blood clotting disorder. Um, so it really determines if the um, trait is dominant or recessive and then your phenotype is basically the condition. So they either have the disease or disorder or they don't. And that's really how you do a pedigree.